Imagine I'm a doctor with eight plus years of experience and a shiny degree to prove it. Can you picture it? I sit you down in a cold white room in a cold white chair and deliver the bad news. Your results came back, and you've been diagnosed with humans' essential illness. The scientific, most likely Greek name is Ignoia, but judging by the discombobulated look on your face, you don't quite understand this medical jargon. In layman's terms, you have a case of ignorance. But don't worry, because the better part of the world suffers from the same debilitating disease. There are different strands of the pathogen, of course, but the type I would like to focus on is the outright, undeniable avoidance of information. What are the side effects, you wonder? They include completely and totally denying the gravity of a situation, even though the evidence is practically spoon-fed to you. My name is Madison Mehta, and today I'm going to be discussing the dangers of environmental ignorance and the solutions that exist. These are the headlines that litter our devices on a daily basis. If you're part of the rare breed of newspaper readers that still grace the planet, you wouldn't be surprised to see something like this on the front cover in bold letters that scream, look at me. Evidence of human-inflicted environmental decay is not something that requires active search. Unless we are fundamentally disconnected from the global conversation, we know what's up. Everyone in this room tonight knows exactly what's up. Now I'm going to present you with an array of photos that describe the dangers of prolonged environmental ignorance. The Arctic is due to have its first ice-free summer by 2040. Rainforests gone in the next 100 years. Sea levels due to rise 7 to 23 inches before the turn of the next century. I've told you about the future. Today, over 2 million children die annually due to environmental causes alone. Even so, as a society, we continue to pump toxins into our atmosphere, drive machines that clear entire forests in a single sweep, and waste and waste some more. Now, don't get me wrong. We are not completely ignorant of our ignorance. In order to make ourselves feel a little bit better, we talk about the potential of change in the future. But the future is this funny gray area where the majority of human productivity quietly disappears to. We falsify a picture of hope by shoving everything we have to do to a later date, characterized as a treasure trove of possibility. But time ticks on and nothing ever happens. The question is, why? Why do we deny an issue like the potential destruction of the natural world as we know it? No biggie, right? We'll do better next time. Take two. I'll remind you that this isn't an option. In order to understand the reason behind our response as a society, I turned to the experts. Mary Pfeiffer, author of The Green Boat, Reviving Ourselves in Our Capsized Culture, has an idea, four ideas to be exact. We are unable to look beyond the present. Environmental decay is something that takes place over decades, but as people, we harbor the inherent inability to, per to perceive time on an extensive scale. This is dangerous as, like most everything else, the environment has a point of no return. We won't know when this is until it's upon us. We ignore what scares us. I know for a fact that when some of you saw my cover slide today, your eyes glazed over and you put up a front. And I do not blame you because you've heard it all before. Innumerable presentations meant to scare you. But as people, we distance ourselves from what scares us, what we don't completely understand, and what is considered bigger than us. The environment is a perfect example of all of these things. We are visual creatures first, and environmental decay is not always obvious. Let's say you live in a small town in the US. You look up at the clear blue sky dotted with white clouds, and you think to yourself, wow, what a beautiful world I live in. You'd think again if you stepped foot in Delhi and were met with a cloud of toxic fumes created whilst making that pair of Converse neatly packaged and delivered to your doorstep. Finally, maybe we are all bystanders. It's easy to sit back and think that somebody else will clean up the mess, especially when we are all indirectly culprits. 
Psychologist Grant Hillary Brenner calls this diffusion of responsibility. It's turning to the person next to you and thinking, eh, he'll take care of it. What if I told you that you could be that person next to you? That you could do something to fix all of this? I know I've thrown a whole bunch of scary stuff at you today, and I'm not saying it's your fault or yours. I'm saying it's ours. We can do something to fix this. Everything I've said about our changing environment is subject to change. We can halt the deterioration that surrounds us. I've told you all about the reason behind our ignorance, and great philosopher Thomas Sowell says that it takes considerable knowledge just to realize the extent of one's own ignorance. Now that we know, we can do something about it. If you foster genuine interest in this issue, you must take steps to begin your own environmental action. Perhaps this is starting your own service project or simply taking part in someone else's. No matter what you choose to do, you must recruit the people around you. Everyone here has an audience of sorts, whether you know it or not. And I promise that if you genuinely care, people are going to listen. Yes, you do have to work against humans' essential illness. A process you can use when doing so is something I like to call active advocacy. I crafted it in response to the complaint that advocacy is the talk without the action. The simple steps are as follows. A for awareness. This is marketing your idea in a way that caters to your audience. D for drive. Your audience will begin to develop an emotional connection with what you're saying. V for voice. Your audience will share what they've learned with their audience. The BBC says that the six-degree separation theory states that between any two people, there are a total of six acquaintances. Ultimately, information can spread to a sea of people in no time at all. O for optimism. You must market your cause, your idea, in a positive light. As I mentioned earlier, people don't seem to listen to what scares them. C for care. You must tend to your cause as interest can fade with time. A for assertion. This is putting your roadmap, whether it be for an event or a fundraiser or simply an idea, into action. C for continued collaboration. This is joining forces with people who will be able to push your ideas even further. Perhaps these are professionals in the field. And Y for yield. This is stepping back, reflecting, and of course, repeating the process again. You don't need an existing platform to do any of this. In fact, if you wanted to, you could start right now. I know I gave you that whole doctor in a white coat analogy earlier, but just like many of you, I have my work cut out for me. Our diagnosis does not limit us. Rather, it serves as a reminder that we must take active, purposeful steps when influencing change. Thank you.